In this video, we're going to attempt to explain chemiosmotic theory alongside oxidative phosphorylation and electron transport. Here we have a short section of the inner mitochondrial membrane, and embedded in that phospholipid bilayer, we've got a bunch of proteins. Uh, we have complexes 1 to 4, and then we have ATP synthase, which is an enzyme at the end, which is used to produce the ATP. Um, but what happens in electron transport? Well, the key things here are the coenzymes that are generated uh, all the way through glycolysis, link reaction, and Krebs. So we're going to start by looking at the action of NADH, or as it's sometimes called, reduced NAD. So what we've got to imagine is we've got already um, an amount, like a reservoir, of protons, which are these H+, plus, uh, kicking around in the matrix. And we've also got some molecular oxygen as well. Um, but here we go, NADH will arrive from Krebs cycle, or the earlier stages of respiration. And that will arrive at the first protein in the chain, which is NADH dehydrogenase. So NADH is going to be oxidised back to NAD. And this yields two things, it yields uh, two electrons, and we also get some protons as well. So, what happens to the electrons? Well, they're taken up by the first protein in the chain. And when those electrons uh, are transferred to the protein, we say that that protein is now reduced because it's got a gain of electrons. Those electrons are then transferred to another protein in the chain, which yields some energy. And that energy is used to pump through protons into the intermembranal space. Same thing happens again. So in this case, the orangey-yellow protein is now reduced. The blue protein is now oxidized. And the electron's going to move on again. This produces some more energy. Please ignore the flipping of those protons. That's just a fluke in my animation. So we get some energy produced again. And once again, this, this energy is used to transfer these protons into the intermembranal space. So, the last little stage of this is where the electrons go and associate with molecular oxygen. And once again, the moving of the electrons has produced a small amount of energy, and that's going to be used to pump H plus again through into the intermembranal space. What we've established here is a huge proton gradient. We've got far more protons in the intermembranal space compared to in the matrix. Now, those protons can't pass through any other protein channel apart from ATP synthase at the end, which is a bit like a water wheel. So, those, protein, those protons are going to flow through ATP synthase. And this produces enough energy to synthesize three molecules of ATP. So, for each... NADH that arrives at the electron transport chain, we get three molecules of ATP being produced. And some of those protons are used alongside the electrons and the molecular oxygen to form some water. And for this reason, um, because the oxygen works to mop up excess electrons, we call the oxygen the final electron acceptor. So that was NADH. We're going to do the same thing again, but for FADH2. So FADH2 cannot give up its protons and electrons to the first protein. Instead, it moves to this fella down here, which is FADH2 dehydrogenase. And this yields again two electrons and two protons. The electrons are taken up, and they move on. But in this, this time, the energy that's produced, because this pink protein is an extrinsic protein, it's not a channel all the way through, protons can't be pumped through there. So instead, the first instance of proton pumping occurs uh, when the electrons move on from the orangey-yellow protein to the green protein. So here we go. Electrons move on. The orangey-yellow protein is now oxidized, and the green protein is reduced. Energy is produced, and protons are going to move on through. 
same thing happens again to the electrons. They jump on and they prepare to form water with the oxygen. Energy is produced and the protons will move through. Again, we're producing a proton gradient, although this time it's not quite as big, um, although it'll still work in exactly the same way. Those protons are going to flow through ATP synthase, and this time we get two molecules of ATP produced. So for each FADH2 that arrives at the electron transport chain, we get two molecules of ATP. And once again, water is formed. There's the half equation. And there we go. That is oxidative phosphorylation, electron transport, and chemiosmotic theory. Thank you.